the end, but I want to make sure people are knowing how to get in touch with you, Mary. And so you, they can reach you where and how and when. Uh, my business phone number is 424-781-0027. Uh, I, I'm in San Pedro, California is my office, but I can also work by phone and by Skype. And then I have another office out in Marietta, California, in the upper desert there. And that phone number is uh, 951-461-4363 or mary at rosewoodregional.com. And that is actually a medical and holistic health clinic where they're really working on integrating the holistic with the, you know, standard Western medical. And I just, it's my dream come true being a part of this. <laughs> I do hypnosis there and a number of other things. Uh-huh. So um, it, it's a very cool place. But either number is, is, you know, I can be reached on either number. And you have a website that people can also enjoy. What's the name of that? Yeah. Uh, www.hypnohalls, H-Y-P-N-O-H-A-L-L-S dot com. Thanks. So now... Um, Mary, do you feel like right now you could do a reading? Do you, and if so, if you could like simultaneously talk about your experience of shifting yourself into that realm, because that's a different energy data. And I, I'm going to ramble here for a little bit while you get yourself going. And then mm-hmm. also talk to us about the experience of seeing and hearing. And you can do a read on me or on an event or, you know, whatever comes to your mind. And um, and then so that people who move into their own psychic capacities uh, or explore this, the, their own spiritual realms or the relationship with the spiritual realms can understand someone's process um, because you are a person of integrity. And it would be nice for them that they are people of integrity to kind of understand that experience. They can go, oh, I'm not crazy. <laughs> this is actually for real. <laughs> Um, I know I call you up while you're thinking about Let me know when you're ready. <laughs> I know that I called you up uh, last week or a week ago and said, I cannot believe the experience I had with the Akashic Records, let me tell you. And I knew that there were only like two people that I could actually tell and you would get the power of the reality of it for me because everybody else would look at me like I was cross-eyed and an idiot and need to be put in a psychiatric hospital. <laughs> I say that, oh, no, listeners, you're not what are you going to do. But I say that more because I think that we all go through this, like, is this real or not? Because if this is real, then this is huge implications. And if it is not, wow, I have got a great imagination. (laughs) So, um, Okay, so go ahead. Yeah, as a hypnotherapist, fellow hypnotherapist, you know that um, our imagination is the only vehicle for communication we really have. Whether we're imagining our feelings, what we see, what we hear, what we smell, what we taste, um, <clears throat> if we imagine a presence in front of us, it appears to be imagination. And yet if you think of it as, as that part of our mind being the only vehicle we have for communication on that level, and we use this in hypnosis and, and in, in a lot of powerful modalities, then you, then you have to actually decide is imagination something that we can't trust. Mm. Um, and if you're an artist, you have to trust your imagination because that's the way you communicate, that's the way you heal. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think we have to look at it as something that may not, <clears throat> what, we, what we look at as something that may not be real, maybe it is real, <laughs> mm. very real. Maybe more real than anything else that that's mm-hmm. going on with us, because mm-hmm. it I look at it as a vehicle for communication. Mm-hmm. One thing um, beautiful uh, about this process is, for me, it's always been a little weird. How do you get there? You know, into that mm-hmm. that place where you're open to receive. <clears throat> so I found my way to do it. But one thing I actually learned from you was to. <laughs> in, in, Instead of going to that place from from this feeling of trepidation of okay well now what am I doing? you know now what's going to happen is to approach it from a place of just joy 
and bliss oh. to, to be oh. having this experience. Um, oh. So I've been working a lot with that to overcome my own natural fear from the reluctant psychic. Is it? <laughs> I love how you said that. Yeah. Um, yeah. And, and boy, it's a, much, it's a very freeing experience to come from that place of joy and bliss and complete wow. acceptance of this process is real. And um, as far as going to that place right now, that that I'm in it. You know, I'm I'm talking to you. I'm very aware. I'm very conscious. But I'm also in that place, and I know that spirit is speaking through me right now. And for the little lecture on imagination, hmm. you know, that's not something I've. Well, it's something I've contemplated as a professional hypnotherapist but not in the way that was just expressed. I know those were not my words. I know that that concept is is coming through me from someone who's trying to open up that perspective for all of us. So that, you know, don't assume that your imagination is something that is not real. Um, I was reading Osho today, Osho, O-S-H-O, wonderful writer of meditations and such, and one thing he said is, I'm going to take you through 120 different types of meditations, but, hey, you know, forgo being anxious and uptight about it. Just be playful. Just play with it. And one of his uh, series of meditations is all about how to just let go. Just let go of your mind, let go of everything, and just let it, let the, the freedom and the easiness come in there. But that when he used the word playfulness, right, because I'd had this, 2,000 page book in front of me I just closed the book and my son said wow you sure read a lot I said yeah I read a paragraph that made me think so much I can't go any farther it's, uh, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like uh, you know why not have fun with it uh, why not be playful with it why not be at ease with it um, not take ourselves so seriously one time I was uh, um, my son and I are trying to do the astral projection and the remote viewing practices and uh so I said, okay, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna do this when I'm gone on the strictly thing. So I had two minutes in my car waiting for my other son. I said, okay, I'm just gonna go see what my other son's doing at home. And I thought, okay, he's sitting in front of the television set and he's watching the show. And da, da, da. so I came home and I said, so how was the show? And he goes, what are you talking about? I said, oh, okay, so it was all my imagination. He goes, you better believe it was. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> Uh, on the other hand, I've had experiences where I'm right there in the moment and I can see details and know and I'll verify it and I'll go, oh, my gosh, it's so freaky. I was right there and it's verified. So it, you have to play with it. It isn't 100%, is it? It isn't 100%. And the other thing is, um, well, I'm going to tell a little story about you. <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> I remember when you were working on bending spoons with your mind, we were having this oh, conversation, yeah. and, and we had all just done it at, at the International Hypnosis Federation Conference. But you were right. trying to do it on your own, and you were so frustrated with not being able to spend, bend the spoon with your own mind right. without, you know, the, the energy from the room. And I got a very clear vision of you walking down a street with very tall buildings on, on either side of you, and you're so focused on the spoon that you don't notice that all the buildings behind you are bending. <laughs> <laughs> so I think, you know, that's the other thing. We become so focused on creating this one thing that we don't realize um, we're, do- we're actually doing it because, because the outcome we expect is not happening right in front of us. So we, we, we act, it's like we get blinders on. We don't see how it actually is happening. In in mm. other areas, uh, um, that was interesting. <laughs> and, yet, and yet, this but is I, all an attempt to walk in integrity too. We're trying to walk in integrity and say, okay, this it, time it worked, yeah. and this time was a complete flop. And yet, you're saying maybe it's not such a flop. Maybe it's just we can't see where we were actually constructive in the moment. It, exactly, and I think um, once you know we, so we're trying. You know, we're focusing and we're trying. And our expectation of how that should manifest is not met. And and so we decided it didn't work. And yet, because we were so focused, we didn't see how it did work, what mm. we did find out. Um, like you, you know, seeing your son watching the show, uh, at the same time, you how can you even be sure of the time period? 
you know. Well, 